are we at a point where merger control isn't going to help all that much and we need to actually start breaking up these companies um, or what would be your number one priority when it comes to fixing problems going forward? Fiona, do you want to take that? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, let me just say that merger control in the United States can be backward looking as well as deal with current mergers. So it's perfectly legal for the government to bring a case as they have against Facebook and say, we're looking at a course of conduct over a decade or more in which Facebook bought or buried a series of nascent rivals. And that's what the FTC's new complaint says. And those nascent rivals appeared every so often for 15 years and Facebook either purchased them or destroyed them or hampered them or raised their costs or did something of that form to prevent them from growing into a successful rival. So that's, uh, that's perfectly allowed. Then if you got to the end of that case and the government were to win, then the remedy in the United States is supposed to restore the lost competition. So this is where your point comes in. How would we restore the lost competition? I think an obvious thing to do is to require divestiture of the acquisitions that were made. You want to make sure when you ask for a divestiture that you're helping consumers and not hurting them. So how would you be hurting them? This expression we use is scrambling the eggs. If the eggs are really scrambled and cutting off, dividing the firms would destroy a product or something like that, you would need to be careful. But here we seem to have Instagram being run as a separate business and WhatsApp being run as a separate business. So that's not as much of a problem. Furthermore, one could apply additional remedies. Now, Prince mentioned interoperability, and I think that one's really important in the case of Facebook. I've written a paper about it because suppose you had Facebook as a standalone without Instagram or WhatsApp, it's still a dominant social network that no one else can connect to and therefore has a monopoly position because if you want to see your friends, they're there. So you can't, you can't just say, oh, I'll go to a competing network and then who would you talk to at that competing network? So making Facebook interoperable the way email is interoperable. For example, my Hotmail account can talk to a Gmail account, can talk to a Yale ISP account. And those are all following the same protocol so they can exchange messages. My AT&T phone can call a Verizon phone and a T-Mobile phone. They all are on the same standard so they can talk to each other. We could, we could mandate something like that as a remedy and that would allow for entry into social networks that was very uh, easy because then there would be all those people to talk to and the entrant could, for example, promise to host you without surveilling you, without harvesting your data and uh, without your consent, or could say, I'm not even going to know anything about you and you're going to pay a dollar a month and it will have a subscription model. So there could be all sorts of, or I'm going to be just like Facebook, only I'm actually going to get rid of the hate speech. And uh, maybe people would really want that kind of competitor. So it'd be really nice to have differentiation in this space instead of a monopolist. Mm 